Manchester United, ever since we returned from the international break, we haven't gone ahead to win a game. We drew 1 1 at Brentford, lost a lead again when you're playing against Chelsea for three, and last weekend at Old Trafford, we lost our lead to a 2 2 draw with Liverpool. Looks like we need to get back to winning ways, and if you are to be asked, what is the perfect game for you to obviously go out here and really head back to winning ways? I think it's the game of Bournemouth. Though it's not an easy game at the Vitality Stadium that capacitates 11,000, 379 people. <clears throat> I really understand that it can really go way past that. Welcome to the United Manners channel. How are you guys? Are you watching us from? I go by the names of Rock and David. Smash the like button, comment, and share. If you're totally watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to this channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. Juma Karim to the Muslims and to the and to the Christians, we cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. This is the match preview. United versus Bournemouth. Game of football happening tomorrow. And later today, Eric Ten Hag is going to be coming up to address what we call the... To address what we call the match pre... Uh, the match... Uh, the press conference to see to it that everything goes on as to planned. Now, when you look at Man United, the following players that are really doubtful to play... Rafael Veran, John Evans, Linderov, Lisandro Martinez, Luke Shaw, Tarell Malasia, Anton Martial, you know, and Scott McTominay has gone ahead to join the queue. You know, we are now having close to how many? Are they eight? Veran, Lisandro Martinez, two, Malasia, three, Luke Shaw, four, um, who? Scott McTominay. There is Malasia, there is Anton Martial, and Johnny Evans. We are back to eight injuries. Oh my God! Oh my God! Do you know that we are, we are soon hitting, uh, we are soon hitting um, an injury list of close to, like the number of injuries we're gonna hit to really <clears throat> face this season, are almost hitting 50. And I trust and trust me, more are yet to come. They are not yet done. They are not yet done. More are really coming and coming and coming and coming. So, when you go to the side of Bournemouth, they've told us that Bournemouth will be without Tavenia, Louis Sinstera. Both are really having a thigh injury. Ryan Fredericks is having a calf injury. The former picked, um, he, fo he picked up an issue against Luton Town last weekend. Then Tyler Adams is having a back injury. Semenyo is, is having an injury that is unspecified. Chris Muff is have his ill and will be assessed ahead of the kickoff. Then Kelly made a welcomed return to the starting eleven last weekend, while Marcos Senesai was fit to make a substitute appearance. So that means Senesi is really a variable. Then either Dango Otara and Alex Scott will be recalled in the absence of Tavenia, while Dominic Solanke, who scored one on his 16 Premier League goals this season, is in the reverse fixture is set to lead the line obviously he went ahead to score at old trafford remember when you play them at old trafford do you know what happened they went ahead to beat us by they went ahead to beat us by three goals to nil and i think with seven games to go i want to see these players show us that they want to go in the champions league because aston villa <coughs> tottenham hotspur are all 11 points ahead of Man United. But for Aston Villa, they've gone ahead to play one more game than us. So, meaning that, all you have to do is, can we win our games? Can we win all our games before we play against Arsenal? Because Arsenal is the second last game of the season, meaning it's going to be the sixth game of the season. Now, can we try to collect 15 points from these next five games for the club of Man United? As they've gone ahead to be rescheduled. And those games are as follows. Let me try. To bring you up to speed and really show you how we are gonna really face these teams that are really next before i go into the predicted starting 11. bournemouth sheffield at old trafford burnley at old trafford crystal palace away right and then arsenal so can we try to get four po can we get can we try to get 12 points you know in the next in our next um in our next four games before we obviously kick off and really play against Arsenal because if we do that we'll be having a better momentum to obviously take on the side of Arsenal so let's go to the predicted starting 11 remember Man United is having 
a very bad record by the way away from home you're not doing well and even at home we've gone ahead to lose very many games and eric ten Hag has gone ahead to be granted another chance to obviously collect three points and sometimes you need to see the players really take center stage and my predicted starting 11 would be as follows because you're really having very many injuries but i really understand that the players will obviously get into the mix and really get to know that we have a lot to fight for i would make some one or two changes in this team that went ahead to start against liverpool and i would go as follows system 4-2-3-1 for the club of man united the goalkeeper is known he's none other than the goalkeeper is no is known is none other than um andre onana in between the stitches for the club of manchester united that is andre onana for you and he's really doing great so he's doing all what he has to do as a player for the club of man united and the rest is gonna be history he's picked and uh, he's really one of those that has gonna hit obviously get into uh four more is like he's as, he has gonna hit to pick form you know but it has gonna hit to come in late but we all know the reason he has been playing with a different back line you know close to 27 times in the game and we think that if at all this back line was really constant it would have gonna hit to offer off better results for the goalkeeper right forward sorry right back i think it's gonna be um, diego dalo playing as the right forward as the right back for the club of man united and um had a very good game against liverpool and he really went ahead to raise his head high after that penalty he issued away when you're playing against chelsea that was really very very annoying then as the left back it's gonna be aaron and bisaka who gifted a penalty that saw liverpool level us at old trafford and it was really very very nasty onto the occasion so I anticipate that comes into this game of football for getting all what happened against Liverpool and getting <coughs> into high spirits to see to it that we'll get or we collect a win for the club of Man United. Central defence, it's going to be Harry Maguire in the central defence, right-sided centre-back. Had a very good game against Liverpool, if I might say, and you can also really believe in me. And on the left side of the central defence, it's going to be Willy Kambwala for me. I really give him a go to obviously start and start his second consecutive game in a row when he started against west ham he never started the next game this time around he is head to start and eric ten Hag really likes these youngsters the moment he gets you a chance and you really prove him right then he gets you into the next game and i think kambala should play every game that is left because he is really young hungry i will never forget to retaliate or remind you what he did when we had just one goal down when he went ahead to win a tackle and it was given as a far hole to man united and liverpool considered it he was like cheering up the fans you know he was doing a job that bruno fernandez was supposed to be doing at the club of man united so for me that's why i love him die and i love to see that he takes on the likes of dominic solanke into that central defense alongside harry Maguire. and i know we can really do that job and really get it done and dusted so we go to the we go to the double pivot obviously it's gonna be Casemiro, who really had a very bad game against liverpool and kobe menu that is it so those are the two midfielders that i believe are gonna be in the double pivot for the club of man united and um kobe menu comes in this game of football after scoring his third goal of the season and he has gone ahead to score he scored a debut against liverpool very beautiful goal and he put us ahead though aaron one bisak has foul denied us winning that beautiful game of football so as a club of man united i think that our pivot can do the job you know for the side of um for the side of Manchester United, but the mobility of Casemiro needs to obviously show us that he's really, I don't know what's wrong with him. Is he playing with an injury? Uh, he's slow, you know, he's really slow. He's no longer that Casemiro that he used to play last season for the club of Man United. Ahead of them, Bruno Fernandes taking center stage as a central attacking midfielder, scoring a very beautiful goal against Liverpool, but people forgot what he did in that game. He had lots of blind passes, Hollywood passes, and his volume of passes in the final third were really lacking. So his decision making is really bad and his end product to his game is really very, very nagging for me. And I'm always nervy when I see him in the field of play. That is it. Because 
he doesn't do exactly what he's supposed to be doing as a number 10 and he doesn't really release his number 9 on the several occasions. To show you that, he's with one of those players that doesn't feed his number 10. I've only gone ahead to see him feed Rasmus Hoyland twice. In the game against Luton Town and in the game against... Um, which side were we playing? Um, Brentford. <laughs> That's when I saw him really feed his number 10. So his number 9. So it shows you how bad he is when it comes, obviously, feeding his number 10. He's really one of those players that you will never wish to have as your number 10. I've got to hit to see say in Portugal, but he doesn't do that. That's why you see it that he's not that kind of player that he's rated highly. You know, he's a good player and he's not a usual player. But he's not rated highly because of his do's that he keeps on doing onto the game of football. That is Bruno Fernandes for you. And now, and now we go to the right attacking side of the midfield. <clears throat> I think I go with shot. Um, is he shot number 21? That is Anthony. I go with Anthony, by the way. <clears throat> I go with Anthony all the way into that position of a right attack midfielder because when he came on in the game of Liverpool, he looked good. And I really saw to it that he can really do the needful. And the game of Chelsea, he looked good. A game of Brentford, he looked good. So I think he deserves a start in this game of football. Left attacking side of the midfield, I really feel shot number 17, that is Alejandro Ganacho, into that position. And I don't want to see Rashford in my team. That's why I bring Rasmus Hoyland to lead the line. I want Rashford to be benched. And I was shocked when Rashford was started in the game of Liverpool because I thought that Anthony deserved a goal and Rashford couldn't be started into that game of football. So we wait to see how things are really going to pan out into that ilk. But I tell you, it's really going to be a highly contested game because Brentford is going to really... Uh, surrender position to the club of Man United, but their energy, the energy these players are going to use on the field of play should be checked out. And this is one of the things that Man United should come out and really look at on several occasions and really ask, why is it that we are not relentless and our opponents are really relentless? When you look at the game of... Um, when you look at the game of... What's the side? When you look at the game of Brentford... Those players ran us off the park. They ran us off the park 100%. And they had all the reasons to really win all what they had to win that day. That is Brentford. And I really gave them a very good a very good uh, applause because we never deserved even to get a point. We had scammed them towards the end of the game, but they went ahead to level up. So we have been really doing the worst and really letting in goals in the dying minutes of the game. Yet we are really taking the lead. In the previous three games, we've been taking leads and we've gone ahead to give them away. Against Brentford, we are lucky. Against Chelsea, we took a lead genuinely and we gifted it away. Not to even get in one more point, but we lost three of those points. That is the ugliest bit of it all. So, um, after that, we have to really go ahead and really get the first goal in. We should get in the first goal in and then get the second one and then kill off this game. We can beat Brentford. I know we can beat Brentford. We can beat them, but it will need some different gear altogether from the players of Man United. Obviously, know that this is the job that we are supposed to be doing and we should kill it off in a nick of time. When we go into the head to head stats coming in from Google. <coughs> Bournemouth are looking to complete their first league double over Man United following their 3-0 at Old Trafford in December. They destroyed us. <laughs> they destroyed us at Old Trafford. Secondly, Man United have won four of their six league away games against Bournemouth, losing the other two in December 2015 and November 2019. Thirdly, Bournemouth have won each of their three Premier League home games. They've never won four in a row at home in the top flight before. So, they are really in a very good shape. And they're really verging to do the needful. Fourthly, after a run of six hour games that saw, that saw them keep four clean sheets and concede just two goals, Manchester United have now conceded in each of their last eight on the road, shipping seven goals in total. That is it. So, 
United are really having a run of six away games that saw them keep clean sheets. After a run of six away games that skip them clean sheets, United have now conceded in each of their last eight on the road. We are getting in very many goals. And lastly, despite coming into the round of a round of games in sixth place in the Premier League table, only bottom side Sheffield. United 560 have faced more shots than Man United in the Premier League season 554 while the Red Devils also have the third highest expected goals against figure 58. So it is really a very hard season for us and for that you attribute it to what we call the team of Man United and the problems you're really having with injuries because there is a lot of inconsistency and trust me if you ask any manager whether he would like to find himself in a situation where United is this season, he'll tell you no. He'll tell you no. But it also goes into who are those players that are supposed to be doing the job when those first team players are real away. That is the huge question that deserves a very good answer. And here we come to obviously let you know that we've come to the end of the preview. And I think we should now come in through with the, with the prediction. 2-1 win for the club of Man United. <laughs> One is asking, Rokan, you are giving United a win? Yeah, I'm giving us a win because, you know, we can really turn it off. We can really turn it off. I don't expect us to play a very beautiful game of football, but I know we are going to grind out a result tomorrow at the Vitality Stadium. We are going to ground out a result provided Marcus Rashford is not in that field of play. If Rashford starts... I will not go on well with Eric Ten Hag. He got off injured, though he told us that he's not going to be out for so long. But why really hurry him back in this game of football? We're having players that can really kill off this game of football. Let him rest. Because even when he's on the field of play, his impact is not felt. Why should we get on Marcus Rashford onto the pitch? Let Ganacho play off the left. Let Anthony play off the right. Rasmus Hoyland through the middle with Bruno Fernandes doing the needful as Casimiro and Kobe Menu really feed him those great passes in there. So I just don't want to see this guy. I just don't want to see Rashford on the field of play. That is it. I just don't want to see him. Amrabat was not pictured in any of the Wednesday and Thursday uh, training sessions. And we just can't wait to see what the manager is going to tell us about Amrabat. But all I want to let you know is that Ericsson is a variable. Mason Mount is a variable. Um, Amhadi Diallo is a variable. And you never know. The manager might surprise us with an, with the start of Ahmad Diallo. You know, Foson Omari is also a variable. So the manager has a lot of players to obviously bring at the Vitality Stadium. And really get us the well-required win as the side of Man United. So right now... I'm just waiting to see what lineup is Eric Ten Hag going to really line up with as we're playing our at Vitality Stadium. But Willy Kambuala, I just want to see him start. I don't know what your thoughts are about him. But for Brentford, you just have to fear for certain team, for certain players, especially into that team who are really deadly and you know how good they are. There is a player called... There is a player called... Solanke, Dominic, he's really good. And um, Clivert is really good. Semenyo is really good. Zabamani is really good. El Cook is really good. Christie is really good. And what makes them good is that they run. They run their hearts out. That is it. They run until their hearts drop out of their lungs. So, I want to see United putting up a very good shape. And really running because if you don't run however good a quality side you are and that team is running they level up to your standard but if you are having that quality and you keep on running with the field of play your quality will surpass will surpass their your quality will surpass their intensity because you'll all be putting in the same intensity and then your quality will obviously surpass them because what they would have gone ahead to outmatch you with, you've already gone ahead to really level it up with, and your elite levels of quality will take over. 
2-1 win for the club of Man United. I don't know what your prediction is, but tell me your additions and subtractions into that probable starting eleven that I'm going to hate to put out. May the living to God bless you abundantly. Rock and David is my name. I sign out for now. See you later. The Muslims, Juma Karim, and the Christians recover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I'm out. First video of the day. More is yet to come. And I think when the, what is it called? When the pre-match press conference comes in through, I'm going to come in through and really do a live video to talk to you. Ciao, ciao.